Welcome to another episode of the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, the podcast where we delve into the stories of visionary leaders who have reshaped their industries. I'm your host, Maheen, and today we have an honor of speaking with a true luminary in the Canadian real estate industry, Mr. Ramandua, the CEO and founder of one of the most iconic brands, Save Max Group. Mr. Dua, whose journey embodies the spirit of entrepreneurship and community engagement, has taken Save Max Group to incredible heights. A relationship-oriented person, he firmly believes in building long-term associations with his clients, realtors, franchises, and employees. SaveMax upholds his belief and adds honesty, integrity, and trust to its corporate values and the work culture. Moreover, SaveMax Group's sponsorship of the naming right to the former Brampton Soccer Center, now known as the SaveMax Sports Center, exemplifies Mr. Dua's strong ties with the community and his commitment to community development. Hi, Roman. On behalf of Canadian SME, I'd like to welcome you to our small business podcast. How are you today? I'm pretty fantastic and thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to uh, get in front of all the viewers here. That's amazing and we're very pleased and as excited uh, to have you here with us on our podcast today. Uh, Now, um, uh, Raman, you know, we would love to delve deeper into the history of uh, uh, Save Max Group. And uh, could you provide some insights into the early days of uh, Save Max Group and share the driving force, which is, I know you, but <laughs> behind the establishment of this prominent real estate agency? Yeah, so uh, we started Save Max uh, back in 2010. It was actually launched on my daughter's birthday on April the 24th. Uh, she has our elder daughter and she has been a lucky charm for us. Uh, but, you know, there, there has been a history um, behind launching the Save Max brand. I actually started my real estate career in 2007. I came into this country as an immigrant in Mm -hmm. 2003. I worked as a at a gas station, as a gas station station attendant. Then I worked in the security guard. Right. Um, Then I actually worked in in one of the offices. Right. Right. Uh, So uh, in 2005, actually, uh, I bought a house for myself, um, and uh, because of some reason, I decided to sell that house after. I think five or six months. Okay. And I really made good money out of it. Right. So I thought like real estate is the career where I should go. Right. Uh, so I got my real estate license in 2007. And that's where this journey got started. Mm-hmm. And uh, 2009, I was having a lot of challenges with the brokerages where I was working because, you know, this market was dominated by bigger brands. Right. And, uh, you know, their theory was uh, they were absolutely against the idea of bringing any innovative solutions for the customers, Mm. right? Which could be a cost effective, but, you know, not compromising on the service. So, you know, I was very disappointed every time when I was bringing an idea, like it was outrightly rejected Mm -hmm. and there was no support system. uh, There was no hand holding. Mm -hmm. You are of your own. Right. So, you know, then I I changed the brokerage. I thought like this could be one of the brokerage. Then I went to another brokerage and, you know, the situation was not anything better than the previous one right and then i started uh, you know understanding the market and uh, i realized like i saw the realtors they were in the business from last 10 15 20 years and they were realtors Mm. and i said is that going to happen to me as well right so then i decided no Mm -hmm. i have to understand this and this was a big problem so one problem was at the end of the customer and the another problem was in the real estate profession itself. Mm-hmm. So I came up with the ideas. I, I brought up some innovative solutions. But you know, those innovative solutions needed a platform. Right. So I thought, you know what, for how long I'm going to keep fighting with these people? Mm-hmm. They are big brands. They don't uh, give an opportunity for people to use their creativity. Mm-hmm. So in 2009, I thought, you know what? I will launch my own brand. Yeah. I was only two and a half year experience in the real estate industry at that time. (laughs) Right. Normally, uh, that was a trend. People did not even take the broker license for 10 years. Somehow, I don't know. And I was not, uh, I was not planning for it. I got my broker license. I got my broker exams done Mm -hmm. well before time. And my first renewal was done as a broker. Normally, that was never happening in the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when that idea came, I thought, you know what? This has happened because of a reason. Right. Because my destiny wanted me to open up the brokerage. Mm -hmm. So in 2009, December, I planned to launch SaveMax. And then, uh, you know, in 2010, April, uh, on Shreya's birthday, we launched this brand from the basement of a house. Wow, that's so sweet. It was uh, was around 600 square feet basement. 
I was renting out that basement earlier, yeah. uh, but you know it was by uh, by chance it was empty at that time. Mm -hmm. So there were two bedrooms there. Uh, so one was the bigger bedroom which I made my office, right. and there was an, another smaller bedroom which we, we started using for our clients. Mm -hmm. And then the kitchen and the living area was over. Uh, like you know the team meetings it was like a kind of open boardroom for us wow so that's where we started this journey uh so when we started this journey of course at that time uh there were a couple of things in mind mm -hmm. uh, i was thinking okay we are going in the market with the new brand name right people don't recognize us how are we going to promote our services mm -hmm. so i actually uh earlier i had the same mindset that i have to come up with innovative ideas so we brought and a revolutionary model to the real estate industry, which was list your house for nine ninety nine. Okay. So that model was based on providing the top of the line services to the customer, mm -hmm. and making sure they don't have to shell out too much money out of their pocket. Mm -hmm. So it was very well accepted by the market. Yeah. Uh, people loved it, and we started growing our business. Beautiful. Right, and we started building up the volumes. So the dream which we started, uh, where we just wanted to do maybe 50 or 100 deals in a year, next year in 2020, uh, 2011, mm -hmm. we were able to achieve the sales volume of $100 million from the basement of the house. Wow. I love the inspiration behind your journey, Roman. Now, reaching, you know, 17 billion in sales volume is a remarkable achievement, which is to date. Um, to gain a deeper understanding of your journey, Roman, please highlight some of the key strategies or principles. I know you touch base on a couple, but we would love to delve deeper into them and uh, learn that, you know, you you believe that you, you're very instrumental in reaching this significant milestone. We would love to know what strategies or principles did you follow? Share with the audience, please. Uh, so there were a few of the things which are like which we made as a principles when we started our company. Mm -hmm. So the first principle was uh, in SaveMax office, we will never bring any liquor or alcohol. Okay. And I feel proud in these in this thirteen years of journey, we never let anybody allow any beer mm -hmm. or any hard drink or any kind of whiskey, wine or anything. Wow. Yes, we do party. We enjoy a lot of people, but we do it outside the office. Mm. And the second most important thing was in SaveMax office, it is our culture. It is our values. We don't allow anybody to misbehave with our female team members mm. or like it's a special respect and regard for them. Mm. Somehow that is in our culture. So these were the two values which we built up when we started the journey of the same max. Now, as far as the business strategies are concerned, so I was very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. First of all, I always brought brand new people on, on save max banner. Right. The simple reason behind that was like, they are passionate, they are coachable. It's easy to train them mm -hmm. and you know, they, they want to do something. Second thing, I encourage a lot of brand, a lot of new immigrants. And I feel proud when I say today, we have 90% people under CUMX banner who were new immigrant in this country. Amazing. For eight years, I was not allowing more than 10 people to join for every year. So my theory, my funda was, let's first create success for them. Mm -hmm. So until and unless I had eight realtors who were making more than $100,000, I was not allowing anybody to come and join CUMX. Because, you know, I thought, first, let's create success for people who are already part of your company. Right. And then add more to it. Right. So I kept building SaveMax step by step, step by step. And in seven or eight years, uh, you know, we actually uh, religiously followed those strategies, you know, brought those people on board who were brand new. Uh, and, you know, another thing, I always brought full time realtors on board. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes part time realtors, uh, I know there's nothing wrong into it. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, they're not able to give 100 percent to the clients. True. Right. And I personally believe in business. You always work for your client. If you take care of your clients, they will take care of your business. Mm -hmm. And I feel proud when I see uh, we have dealt with a lot many families where we sold uh, in like 37 houses in last 10 years for one family. Wow. Can you believe? It's hard to believe, but I'll believe you. <laughs> right. It's yes. an Italian family. I sold 37 houses for them. They are bigger family like us. Right. Right. And. 37th deal you get when you do it 36 times, when you do it right 36 times. Yes. Right? So that is how 
uh, we built up this 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 brand uh, and another philosophy which i always believe in that we are building a family with professional values mm. right and uh, there is the kind of culture we have adopted uh, under save max banner uh, we all from the day one it's it's a, it's a religion in save max that we all sit together and do lunch together mm. we all bring lunch from home nobody brings lunch from outside or like from any any cafeteria or any restaurant yeah. we all have home cooked food and the lunch time and we we keep it as a buffet that is so sweet right that is so sweet yes. and there's an another tradition which we adopted there's another norm which we adopted every thursday we have almost 200 people coming into office at one place either it's canada or it is india every thursday everybody gets lunch from office oh <laughs> right yeah so you know that is the kind of bonding which we have created and i feel proud the real estate industry was working on a success uh, on a on a success model of 9010 mm. so 10% people were doing 90% business in other words if there are 100 people working in any brokerage only 10 were doing business 90 were not doing anything mm. or they were below average realtors but with our conviction with our um training learning and hand holding support system mentorship system we brought that success rate to 90% i can tell i mean the strategies that you've laid out it's great right? i mean so, why wouldn't they <laughs> yes <laughs> so if i have to if i have to put up like two or three points first thing we always brought full time realtors mm-hmm. second we emphasized a lot on learning and development right third we believe in mentorship mm-hmm. so the kind of model i have created there's a three tier support system so a realtor comes and join the company for 6 months you will not go alone anywhere mm. there will be a team lead there will be a mentor who will be accompanying you yeah because you know that 6 months is make or break right if if your experience is bad same thing like when a new immigrant comes to this country in canada if first 6 months are bad it becomes very hard for him to achieve the success correct if those first 6 months somebody give a wonderful hand holding guide them into the right direction and you know steer them mm. their success can be unimaginable wow you know you've you've summarized everything so beautifully mr roman it's it's great to <laughs> learn so much and i think that is the reason why you've built a network of over 1250 agents that's right and uh, 80 plus franchises yes. across two countries in quite an it's which is quite an accomplishment you know for all of us listening to this uh, interview today but we're very curious about your approach to this growth i know that you've listed out some strategies where you take care great care of your realtors but we would love to know how did you successfully create mm-hmm. and manage such a widespread and thriving network uh so you know all this growth and everything for first 8 years we just operated like a brokerage mm. in 2019 i thought you know what i think we can do better we can do bigger so why not we start why not we start sharing our success with others right. because earlier we were very close knit company so in 2019 i thought we are achieving wonderful success mm-hmm. and i think we can share this success with a lot many other people so we came up with an idea and we started expanding our base right and then we started building up the franchise network mm-hmm. in 2020 and 2021 we have got enormous growth but you know i always believed in my life you know the biggest challenges of life brings you the best opportunities correct and somehow i have been gifted with the ability by nature i convert every single opportunity every single challenge of my life into an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So covid was one of the, that challenge. And I'm surprised because yes. it was a very challenging time for yes. sure, yes. And March 2020 when covid started, mm-hmm. we shut down our operations. Right. Almost for 3 weeks though we were in essential business, but you know the way uncertainty was, nobody knew what's happening. What's happening yeah. So you know we had to shut down our operations and I was pretty much in the hibernation. Mhm. somehow i got inclined doing meditation oh wow i was doing because i didn't have anything to do to do yeah <laughs> and that time i got to myself after so many years because you know i was passionately working for 16 to 18 hours wow 7 days a week so you know those 3 weeks gave me a time to connect with myself i was doing meditation for 6 to 8 hours wow right 
and then and i was getting continuous call from my team because people were uh, not sure about their job stability either they will be coming back to the office or no mm-hmm. and then it was a time when we got a challenging task uh, it was shreya's birthday 14th birthday and she was planning from january to spend some time with her friends and all this stuff right and unfortunately covid happened in march and her birthday is in april right and me and nidhi we were so skeptical to talk to her because she's going to be disappointed for sure she came to me and she said that what's your plan for my birthday mm-hmm. and i was shocked what should i answer it's covid right. right nobody can go anywhere and it was spreading like anything mm-hmm. so i said shreya i'm pretty sure you understand the situation uh, so we're going to celebrate within the family but she came with a fantastic idea she said dad can we do a fundraiser at least on my birthday oh for the healthcare workers for the for all those people who are putting themselves at the forefront to save other people's life for sure and you know i was shocked wow and i said wow that's a great idea so i came out of my hibernation i called all my marketing team and i said okay guys we are planning to do a fundraiser for shreya's birthday mm-hmm. and this girl so we kept a target to raise 25000 dollars wow we raised 25000 dollars within 2 hours wow okay right? <laughs> yes so within 48 hours we raised <clears throat> $60000 on shreya's birthday mm-hmm. and we did a gathering of 1000 people amazing following the covid protocol so how it all happened we actually did a drive through birthday for shreya So, so all the same next team members mayor of the city peel police fire all of them they actually drove in front of our house that is and so you know nice. there's a beautiful video on youtube about that as I'm well i'm going to watch it so yes. uh, you know and that brought me back into the office so we started uh, putting up all the system back in uh, in the action mm-hmm. and i thought this covid is the biggest opportunity if we understand the market if we come up with new ideas if we come up with the right solutions mm-hmm. we can grow our business during this time for sure and from march 2020 to end of 2022 we have grown same max five times bigger than what it was wow on for business for hiring the realtors for putting up the franchise network and expanding our operations globally that's so inspirational right now so we, we need to do one like a, a an exclusive uh, part 2 of it with Shreya <laughs> we need to have her here next time oh <laughs> uh, she is awesome <laughs> she looks seems like a joy for sure yes yes so you know and uh, i feel proud uh, when we took this journey which was started from a basement almost 13 years before uh today uh, we have an amazing team of 1250 people wow. uh, all across canada as well as in india Uh, so we are uh, we just launched our operations in dubai today morning oh, uh, so we are officially an a, a registered uh, company in in dubai as well mm-hmm. and and uh, digitally we are available in 11 countries right now okay my plan is to take savemax brand to at least 25 countries mm-hmm. by by 2025 We wish you continued success, and it will be achieved, Mr. Roman. But like with your goals and mindsets in place, <laughs> we're sure it's achievable. <laughs> Now, Roman, beyond your business successes, you've been, uh, you know, actively involved in uh, philanthropy, which is which you just explained your uh, your daughter's birthday is one yes. great example, right? You've supported uh, initiatives like the Krish Hope Foundation and contributed greatly to the Trillium Health Partners. Uh, we'd like to explore how you balance your professional achievements with giving back to the community. Mm. So this giving back to the community is very important. I think uh, it is not that I am giving back to the community. It is I think I am taking a lot from the community. Right. I'm just uh uh th- this is a way uh, to convey my thanks to the community because whatever I am today is because of the community. Mm. So I feel uh I have been blessed. I have been showered with so many blessings. Uh I have to do something in return. uh so keeping that in mind uh we opened up krishop foundation on my son's name uh, so we adopt 100 kids every year under privileged kids and we mm-hmm. provide them because i believe providing a positive atmosphere to any person 
especially to youngsters mm. and especially to kids is very very important okay. if they get the right mindset if they get the right atmosphere they're going to stay away from the negativity they're mm-hmm. going to stay away from the drugs they're going to stay away from the problems and i think sports is one of the medium which i personally admire it you know it it helps to burn a lot of energy it helps to make you disciplined uh, it helps to uh, understand the power of the teamwork mm-hmm. right so whatever you need to make yourself a successful and a great human being sports can do sports that sports can do that so keeping this in mind uh, we started adopting 100 kids every year and we take care of all the recreational facilities like if they need any membership for any club if they need any kind of equipment mm-hmm. to get engaged into sports uh, we provide them that and uh, i personally believe it is our moral responsibility to take care of the next generation and i think this is this is nothing which i am doing right so this is one of the activity you spoke about trillium health partners uh, there's a big story behind it uh, when i came into this country as new immigrant uh, uh, nidhi got pregnant and uh, you know we had to welcome shreya yeah. uh, so she was born in credit valley hospital okay so when we went into that hospital i was so mesmerized to see the kind of family atmosphere we got the kind of treatment we got from the trillium staff mm-hmm. i never felt that i'm away from my home right i felt like every single person working over there is my family mm-hmm. because the, that is that is how they were treating us right and i was i was trying to i was trying to call it i said like if we have to go through this procedure like a delivery in india i would have end up spending like at least 10 to 20 lakh rupees for that mm-hmm. right uh the kind of facilities we had the kind of treatment we got it was a kind of five star treatment right at no cost to us right right and unfortunately i did not have that much money at that time mm-hmm. so then came the turn for fresh yes. again he was born in trillium he was born in credit valley so both uh, both of these kids uh they have been very uh, fantastic kids and now uh during the covid mm-hmm. uh we got blessed with this little one arya oh right so three children in total yes okay so we have three cool. models actually <laughs> <laughs> they are 17 <laughs> 9 and 2 yeah. and a half now <laughs> right That's so, cute. so arya was born during covid i call her as a covid baby Aww, and uh, i personally believe she she came into this universe for a bigger purpose mm-hmm. uh because uh, you know she actually fought whole covid Yes, the, I can tell 2 years ago was really independence yes for sure. Right? So COVID, you know she she had that the story of the struggle uh, you know the moment she start coming into existence. Right. Right? And she has gone through that struggle survived and came up as a beautiful chick kid. Oh. So when Arya was born and uh, you know we were doing so well in the business so me and Nidhi decided I said Nidhi uh, we have been treated so well by Trillium and uh, this covid has given us a, a great lesson of life mm-hmm. that healthcare is such a big importance it is right and life is so fragile mm-hmm. we have seen people going like this during covid right right so, short, huh? so then we we decided like and you know, we discussed with our team and as save max family we came forward and we pledged to donate 2.5 million dollars to trillium health partners wow um so and i personally uh, feel so happy that you know i that nature has given me that power community has given me that power uh, that i can do uh, this little thing you know as an as a as as my special thanks to trillium right the right? well, community has given the power to the right man we can say right you you're amazing uh, raman now the save max sports center and the save max pan canada games showcase your dedication your your dedication on another level to the community development um to understand more about this commitment what inspired you to invest in these particular projects and in your opinion um what role should businesses play in supporting local communities let's let's do that as a wrap up of of this conversation today yeah. uh same export center i know uh, it's in brampton uh and you know brampton has be brampton is the first city where i landed as an immigrant so right. it's my first love uh you know and first love is always remembered uh, for, sure. for, for whole life and brampton has given me so much so much uh so city of brampton approached me and they said raman uh you know we see your 
billboards, posters, and you know, bus shelters everywhere. Like I have flooded the city with with those. Yeah. And uh, we were doing, we were spending quite a good amount of money on on doing those promotions. Uh, University of Brampton, they approached me just before COVID, mm-hmm. and they said uh, we are getting this wonderful opportunity uh, to name. Uh, you know, it was named as Brampton Soccer Center, and they right. they wanted to give the naming rights. Mm-hmm. They said we could not find any other ideal candidate than Save Max Aww. to have that privilege, and it's it'll be so prestige for City of Brampton to put Save Max brand name over there because you have been very prominent in the community, and uh, the other good reason was. You know, it would have reduced the tax burden mm-hmm. on the residents of the city. Wow. So, uh, though I was overexposed in Brampton as far as the marketing <laughs> is concerned, like I thought, uh, you know, we were doing too much in Brampton. Right. Right. So, uh, but you know, I love the concept so much. And I said, you know what, this, this city has given me a lot. And, uh, you know, having an, a prominent building like Brampton Sports Center, uh, Soccer Center, which was right in the middle of the city on Dixie and Sandalwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be an honor and and a pride moment, uh, not for me, right. for a new immigrant, oh. right? When somebody will stand in front of that sports center, they will have a dream that if Raman can do it, I can do it. So I dedicate Brampton Sports Center, converted into Save Max Sports Center, to all the new immigrants wow. who come here in this country with a dream in their eyes and they want to fulfill that dream. So my humble request to all the new immigrants, when you come and start your journey in this country. Come see Roman. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Go and stand in front of Save Max Sports Center. Yeah. Visualize yourself. Visualize your name. Visualize your business name mm-hmm. on that building. And I think... Lot many brand new immigrants, lot many new immigrants can get a lot of inspiration for that. And that was my reason to get the naming right in spite of having so much marketing done in Brampton. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I think this is the center which I can dedicate to a new immigrant who came in 2003 into this country with a lot of dreams in his eyes, Mm -hmm. worked at a gas station, worked as a security guard. If that... uh, because I personally believe I'm a very normal guy. I'm not too intelligent. I'm not too smart. Um, and, you know, I come from a very humble uh, background. Like, you know, we lived in a 50 square foot house, seven people. A 250 square foot house, seven people. We lived in a house without a washroom. Oh. So that is where I started my journey. If I can do that, any new immigrant can do it. Well, if I'm so inspired, I can just imagine how inspired our audience would be because a lot of them are new immigrants, yes. right? Yes. But uh, Raman, thank you so much for such profound and such knowledge that you've shared with us today. It's your journey, you've been so transparent and honest. And we love the work that you're doing for the community. I mean, thank you so much for your time yes. and for being part of our small business podcast and for inspiring our audience today. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. And uh, we talk about these small businesses. So I want to give a message to all the small businesses sure. out there uh, guys uh, wherever we do business in whatever community we do business uh, I think it's a blessings to get success in that community so we all should come forward as a socially responsible organization and give it back to the community that is how we're gonna build bigger business better business bigger communities better communities and it will be our tribute to the next generation Thank you very much, and I love you all. As we wrap up this insightful conversation with Mr. Ramandua, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our partners who make this podcast possible. A big thank you to our exclusive banking partner, RBC, for their continued support in bringing these inspiring stories to you. We also want to express our appreciation to exclusive shipping partner, UPS, and our exclusive accounting software partner, Zero for their invaluable contributions. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery. If you found this episode as inspiring as we did, please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share. Stay tuned for more episodes featuring industry trailblazers who are making a difference. Until next time, this is Mahin signing off.